like I said, I always go for the finish. Doesn't matter if it's stand up on the ground, that's what I want to do. Ilya, the sledgehammer, Latifi! Octagon, the Shark Tank. I'm the Baby Shark and I'm hungry. Tabitha, Baby Shark Richie! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous! <laughs> Listen to me, we're at it. Jimmy. Welcome to, oh, sorry, Matt. I was going to say, I, I apologize. I'm starting by apologizing because you, can you hear it in the background? Yeah. They're doing that, some that work a, here. Is that a dust buster? What is that? No, it's, they're, out, they're vacuuming outside because I'm still getting a lot of work done here. It's, mm. it's quieter though. There's not the constant banging. But um, I'm going to try to keep my hand over the mute button when that's happening. I'm just saying this now. Uh, we have a good show today. Um, uh, our first guest, uh, we, have, we have Tabitha Ricci. She's coming on in just a little bit. And Lila Latifi, we will get in in just a moment. He's fighting um, Alexi Olenek on uh, Saturday night. That's a great fight. I can't believe those guys have never fought before. Hey, they were supposed to yes. fight before, though. You Three times. Know? This is like a third time, yeah. Three times. Hey, and also, I like to keep things like, Fresh for our audience, guys. I just saw the text. Should I read this later? Something about Steve-O? <laughs> oh no, no. I, I, I'll tell you what happened. I, um, I interviewed Steve-O this morning on the radio oh. with Sam, and uh, he's promoting a new book. And he mentioned unfiltered to me. He's like, I, I do I have anything about that? So I was like, I thought maybe he was on today or next week. So they were are, are working on getting Steve-O back on, who's a, a great guest, and he was I'm really glad. fun today. I am happy that I asked about that. Because I saw it right there and I didn't read it. And now the world found out when I found out. Jimmy, I am more in, I'm more with it than I was the other day. Where, you know why? Because I started the day. Why? I started the day with jujitsu. I got up early. And you know, you see all these things with all these guys that train and they're motivational. And they're like, ah, I'm getting up sure. at 30, 4, 30, 5, 30. I get it. But I'm not getting up to do burpees. I'm telling you right now. I will hit the burpees stool. suck. Well, burpees suck. Right. Does it? Oh, it doesn't always have to be something that sucks. Is what I'm saying. Bro. Right. Absolutely. Right. Like I get things moving, even though I'm not training live, which I'm going to start. I'm going to start with my kids soon, because I can, you know, my 13 year old. Sure. That's around. I can. I want to, you know, just with my leg, just to get moving the timing. But I'm still teaching like a motherfucker. So, two times, two classes a day. That's two hours on the mat whatever three classes a day is three you know and uh it makes jimmy it makes me feel balanced does that yeah. make sense oh sure it does o yeah I otherwise i get very pent up when i walk around i got nah, yeah nah. you don't want that jimmy no i'm bumping the mirror I'm all bent up. um what do you say matt we bring in uh is this yes. only latifi's first time on our show i i i, I get oh, my memory is getting how fucking how dare you He's been on the show before to promote his fight with Alexi Olenek. When it was oh, I, I didn't remember. My memory is really uh, I remember shit. asking him, is he worried about that that naked front strangle? That, yeah. that, that uh, The naked e e Ezekiel he does. Ezekiel choke on yeah. his neck. And then I realized that Aliyah does not have a neck. So why would he be worried? Let's get him That's in. That's a great point. Yeah, let's bring him in. But I remember talking to this gentleman. How do you forget a face like that? Hi, Alir. Hello. We got him. Hello. How you doing? How are man? you? How are you? Great. It, Enjoying Vegas. Great weather in Vegas. It's fight looks, week. It is fight week. Now yeah. you were supposed to fight Alexi before, how, like two other times, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so back in March, uh, we we're scheduled to fight then. Fight week, you know, you know, Matt, Sarah, fight week, anything can happen. Crazy things happen, you know, and nice. I got a very bad uh, stomach infection, food poisoning, and 
Uh, tr I tried to reschedule the fight two weeks after, but like I was still still recovering, you know, on antibiotics and stuff. So yeah, yeah, wow. that, that's what happened. So, but uh, now we're here, you know, and uh, it's fight week, and it's it's amazing. Do you, you know what you ate that got you sick? Because I'm so paranoid. Like before I fly, I won't eat fish, I won't eat sushi. Do you know what it was? I have no idea. You know, the crazy thing is uh, I was uh, very careful what I eat and stuff. Like I only eat the prepared food from the UFC. Uh, but something hit me, you know. And, and Some guy, was, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad, you know. So, But, you know, now we're here. You trained with uh, your your opponent on Saturday. You trained with Alexi before, correct? You guys had some training before? Uh, yeah, well, we used to train back in ATT a couple of times. Not very much, but, you know. Uh, we did some trainings together, you know, uh, so. Now, so we, now yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. You trained a little no. bit. All right. Now, yeah. You know, listen, I asked you this before. I'm going to ask you again. That the, the, the Ezekiel, he does. A lot of guys would be worried about it. I go, Jimmy, you think he's worried? Jimmy goes, come on, he has no neck. I go, Jimmy, that's kind of rude. He has a neck. <laughs> but if you go like this, look, look, if you just act confused like this, the guy, there's nothing there to do. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. You're a block. He can't. There's no neck. I, I'll tell you right now. If he gets the fucking I'm like you, Matt, sir. Through, I'm like you. Same, same. I'm telling We're, you, 19 inches, 19 and a half. What is your neck? <laughs> No, nah, but you you gotta give the 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 Mac cred, you know. The guy's has six over sixty victories, you know, and and uh, you know he, he he's a master at what he does. So I think a lot of guys when they fight him, they underestimate him or or his skills, you know. But uh, that's nothing that I do, you know. I know he's very good at what he does, it. and even like understanding how he fights, you know, he sees fights against uh, I think it was Mark Kant and Alice, you know, he he goes for it, you know, so. He's there to fight. He's a real warrior. You know? he, and he's this old school guy, you know? Not so much talk, but when he comes in, he comes in to fight. He's pretty incredible, too. When you see a guy at 45 years old, uh, fighting as often as he fights, as competitive as he's fighting, yeah. fighting the caliber of... Uh, he's not taking any easy fights. No. Uh, do you find that as a guy who's... You're 39. Do you find that encouraging? Like, hey, there's a bunch of years left of fighting if I just do the right thing and eat the right thing and take care uh, of myself. Of course. I mean, he, he's an example. He and uh, uh, some other guys, you know, you, you fight smart and you believe in what you do, your work. Uh, there, there's no uh, limits, you know, on how long you can fight. It's... I think it's a balance of training right, training smart, and fighting smart, you know? So, and of course, you got to have the will and dedication, and, and that, that he loves fighting, you know, that he, yeah. that's his life. I, I wonder if some of his victories are because people are underestimating him, like for real. Like, we're Verdum. If you look at him in Verdum, you're like, all right, that's a bad matchup because Verdum's got to be the better grappler. Yeah. And then you see Verdum go to finish him, and he's and he was almost like a turtle in a shell. Like he'd clam up, and then he'd come out, and he'd come out on top, and and he ended up beating Verdum, which yeah. was in a grappling match. He ended up beating him, yeah. getting out, and got out of a tight Kimura. run. So it's like I wonder if guys are going in, they're going, all right, he's you know he's got that choke, but he's he's kind of old, he's kind of bent over. But there is, I think he's one of those guys when you get in there. Uh, a lot with a lot of people, it's different being in there with them than it is watching a tape of them. Would you agree of with course. that? Of that, course, that's totally, totally right. It's different being inside and fighting him and watching, you know. And you know, that's some fighters, you know, you don't get so impressed when you see, see them outside, but when you when they're fighting them, it's a totally different story, you know. So yeah. I think that's that's the kind of fighter he is. Have you changed it? You said training smart. Have you changed anything in your training in the last few years to give yourself more lo more longevity? Like a lot of guys won't spar as much. Is there anything that you've switched up to give yourself more time? Uh, to be honest, uh, I just like, I've been better on listening to my body, you know, like uh, the body's like, it's, it's uh, the most com complicated and amazing, I mean, machine, if you want to call it, you know, but uh, sometimes we we push it too hard, you know. So it's it's the balance of pushing hard, not be like not getting lazy and say oh, I need time to recovery, but knowing the balance when you need time to 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 fill up to get stronger, you know. So and, and I think coming from a background of wrestling, when everything is about 
pushing hard, hard, hard. Like you're always on that red zone. We came from that mentality. You know what I mean? It's like wrestlers, it's a crazy way of training in life, you know, and learning a little bit from other sports, like from, I mean, from CrossFit or whatever, you know, or boxing, you know, and seeing the, the difference a little bit, you, you get some good things of, of, uh, of planning. Now, now, did you did you recently and with, with training? Now you listen to your body and whatnot, but you were coming off a few losses. But then it's like hitting the reset button because you 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 know you you righted the wrong, and next thing you know, you got that win over T uh, Tanner Bozer. So yeah. did, did something change? Like with the, there's a lot of pressure, man. I know how it's. I, I mean, not, it's like, listen, hey, I came from three three losses, but those I mean, some of those fights were very close. There, there was yeah. fights that I could have win. Derek Lewis fight, a lot of people thought that I won that fight. I mean, I fought Corey Anderson. It was a, it was a three-rounder war, you know? Also, like, a tough, a close fight. So, I mean, sometimes you come from three losses, but it doesn't mean, like, oh, people, a lot of times when they come, they're like, oh, I got to change everything. No, sometimes it's just a close fight, you know? It wasn't your day. Yeah. And a lot of times I think fighters try to, like, oh, I'm doing something wrong. No, it was just not your day. But sometimes you have to evaluate, right? Am I training right? Is it the right way? So, I mean, that's that's important to have a good team around you and evaluate everything, you know? Like, is what, was I doing something wrong or was it just a bad way? Because, I mean, you see a lot of fights that the ju it's in the judges' hands, you know? Yeah. And how much better? Uh, I, I know you, you came up to heavyweight. And how good does it feel in fight week to not be obsessed with the weight? Oh, it's a big relief. To be honest, like, I think, like, I mean, in all combat sports, you see with years, fighters go up in weight. You rarely see the fighters fight the same weight all their life, you know, all their career, you know. Uh, but, uh, I mean, been wrestling since I was six years and, and combat sports all my life. After a while, you know, weight cuts take a toll, you know. And, and people that don't fight don't really understand I mean, you can have personal trainers, strength and conditioning coach, but people don't really understand what uh, what how much weight cuts drain you before a fight, you know. And I was always against people cutting a lot of weight because I always said, like, when the tough gets fight, it's gonna end up how good you recover from your weight cuts, you know. Because we're, we're in the end, we're just humans, all you know. So, and, and uh, we see a time time like people just like really really feeling bad you know in the fights that oh wow he didn't train no it's not that he didn't train he was a beast in training but in the training he was walking around 200 pounds you know and now fight week he cut all that weight you know and it drains you so yeah. i don't believe fighters should cut weight and i i think it's good with all the real uh, regulations they did but of course when you fight in heavyweight you can eat but of course there's another problem. Now you're fighting guys that are heavy hitters, you know, and, and, and when you make that step, I was talking about that. When you make that step from 205 to, to heavyweight, 265, you're not really going up one weight class. You're going up two or three weight classes because you're fighting guys that cut, cut their weight. I mean, they, some of these guys walk around 300 pounds and they cut to 265, you know, so you're not really going up only one clay weight class, like right. from 185 to two, 205. You you got to be ready to fight guys that are like big, a lot bigger than you. So I can understand like John Jones doing the, taking his time, building himself up for the weight class because these guys are bigger, punch harder, you know, and your body's got to be able to, to handle that weight. Right, but you think that like, even though it's a tough, again, you are fighting bigger guys, stronger guys, it's still the, the advantage is still that you're not cutting the weight, so at least your body is, like, either way, for it's sure. tough, but this is better for you. For sure, for sure. I, I feel better, you know. Uh, I've always been, been a strong guy, so uh, there was never a problem. So, But just, like, not needing to cut that crazy weight, I mean, cutting 30, 35 pounds, it was just, like, too, too draining. Oh, well, listen, right. there's plenty of, you can look at examples like Robert Whitaker, Gilbert Burns, those guys, they're different, I mean, they had like different careers when they went up a weight class. Exactly. I mean, it's crazy. I, I think we would see a lot of other fighters have longer careers and, uh, and, and like you said, they would perform better going up on weight class. 
Yeah, Kelvin Gastelum. Uh, and then there's guys like Jose, which I get it's, it's much different when you're that much lighter, who goes down a weight class, which is much more rare. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, uh, Brazilians love to cut a lot of weight, you know. They're, they're famous for that. <laughs> I, first time I trained with some Brazilians, they were like, saying, oh, you should fight 170. I'm like, 170, I'm going to cut off both, both, both my legs if I'm fighting 170. <laughs> So, I mean, it's a culture thing, but I just believe, like, be strong. And, I mean, Matt, sir, you, you wasn't, like, a, the biggest guy in your division. Shit. Man, I, it's funny. I saw a thing the other day with the, I think it's one of the lightweights, the tarantula or something, and then Frank yeah. Yeager, they go, yeah. uh, the tarantula is uh, six foot something, and, and Frank Yeager got the title at five six at lightweight. I go, yo, I got the welterweight title at five six, motherfucker. That's what I mean. So I mean, just like, I just tr believe, like, be a beast in yeah. your way, you know, do your thing. Because everybody, oh, they're so tall. For me, it's the same thing. They're tall in two or five. They're gonna be tall in one eighty five. They're gonna be tall in heavyweight. So, just like, adapt your style of fighting to how you built, you know. Aaliyah, That's like I, like I used to tell all the, the tall ladies I try to date, we're all the same size on the floor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, just, I don't know. That's a five, six guy. Yeah, I try to hit on them. But anyway, I'll, I'm <laughs> with you, man. I'm with you. And I like what you said before. When you have, it says you have these L's. There's more to that. Some people, they want to all reinvent the wheel. But meanwhile, they don't have to. They switch teams. They do this or that. Yeah. And then they all get fucked up. Sometimes yeah. you're like, all right, look, you're right there. Look at the fight. You're right. Either the judges didn't get it right or, look, a couple of corrections here and there, you're right fucking there. Exactly. You know, it's small, small marginals sometimes, you know. So yeah. a lot of times people want to make, fun. oh, what did I like? Hey, man, it's a fight, really? you know. Well, this is your first fight in 15 months uh, since Bozer, correct? Yeah. Since you're since he you got the eye poke, um, yeah. how how bad was that? And w was there a point where you thought like I don't know if I'm going to compete again? Uh, it was a point. It was very bad. I I got totally blinded, and uh, you know they rushed me out to the emergency and like stuff. And I I didn't understand what happened because I thought I thought my eye was swollen because I couldn't couldn't see during the fight. So when I come out, I'm like, yes, is my eye very swollen? And the doctor said, No, your eye is fine outside, like. But the, the eyeball was punctured, so I was totally blind. And it was like a crazy feeling because I never thought something like that could happen, you know. And, uh, you know, it took, it took a couple of months to start recovering. But I really had to give it time, you know. And eyes are sensitive, so th that's, that was a crazy thing to, to go through, too. Did they, what was the prognosis? Or, like, did they originally tell you, like, you're definitely going to heal? Or did they say, look, this is 50-50, we don't know? Uh, they actually gave me a 70-30 a chance, chance to, to heal, you know? So, but I was, like, uh, I was very determined. You know? So they said, like, right now we can't do nothing. We just got to give you time to rest and heal. So I said, listen, I'm going to get back, you know? It's not going to end like this. So, and... Uh, you know, God willing, with time, it got better, you know. But it took, like, two, three months until I, I, I could get, a, like, a better sight. It wasn't blurry, you know. But were in the you, first, it was totally blacked out. Like, blacked oh. out. Yeah. Were, you, were you afraid you were going to get a, a bisping? Were you, were you afraid something was going to... You know, it's so crazy, because I actually... When that happened, I was like... That's, like, it's... I never thought that what happened to him would happen to me, you know. Yeah. So it says a little bit about this sport. People don't understand because sometimes, you know, some injuries look nothing. Because in the fight, it wasn't a hard punch. It was actually just like the, the, the thumbnail. But it was just like a razor blade hit me in the eye. Oh. And it was so nasty. And I don't know how I just pushed through it, you know. Yeah, I guess what what is it you see guys fighting to with broken jaws or injuries like that? I guess it's the adrenaline that just keeps you going, or, or thinking that it was swollen. Maybe you didn't obsess on the fact that if if you knew it was in the condition it was in, you probably would not have continued. Correct? I, to be honest, I wasn't just thinking. My just my coach just said, "Listen, you just gotta keep on pushing," you know. And I just like I grabbed Dom on him and just continue fighting, you know. And uh, I gotta give credit to to both of that 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 kid is he's a he's a tough fighter you know he he comes out and swinging hard you know so uh, no so it, it was a, it was a challenge you know but coming out of that with that pressure of having the uh, the 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 
the losses, you know, behind, it was, it was an important win, you know? Shit, yeah, man. Jimmy, what do you think? He's got a little boo-boo. He's going to stop. Oh, you think you might have stopped if you knew he was going to... Here, fuck no, Jimmy. Stop. Well... You think that he's a warrior, Ali. Ali has a warrior. How but, if you, you? but if you know that your eye is blacked out, oh. you might be afraid you're going to lose your vision and you want to fight again. You know what? I, I didn't think about that. I thought my eye was swollen. That's the only yeah. thing I thought. My eye was swollen and I just continued fighting, you know? And... Uh, like Matt said, you know, I this sport, it's it's a one of a kind sport, you know. Uh, all the fighters that that fight in this level of fighting, not only in the US, but like they need a lot, a lot of credit because every time we step in there, we put our health on on risk. You know, it's you know? it's not a this is not a game. This is not football. This is not basket. This is not even boxing. You know, it's yeah. it's it's a lot of things that can go wrong. You know. So every time we step in, we're, we're, uh, we're conscious about what can happen, you know, and, and still challenge yourself. That's why you got to give credit to, to some guys that just time after time just deliver, you know, to defend their titles, you know, and, and, and you know, whatever happens, they, they come through it, you know. So uh, a lot of credit to all the fighters out there, you know, they're, they're, they're real gladiators, modern day gladiators, you know, and that's why I think that's why so many people admire this sport and the people in it you know that's why you see all these artists musicians hanging around want to be ufc fighters you know but to be a ufc fighter to be an mma fighter it it takes matt you know what it takes it takes something oh, yeah. else yeah and, and it's something that you can't fake you know no 100 percent. Win, win or lose people that go in there they have something else in their spirit you know and right. every, time, every time we go in there, Jimmy's at risk, too, because his little heart's frail. He gets nervous. I, I get very know, nervous. I don't want to get hit. So he, we're not only putting our lives. He gets he, he gets nervous, and I tell him, just calm down, your little frail heart. Calm down. Yes. I had a finger injury from chewing my nails nervously. <laughs> Aaliyah, before we let you go, what do you, what do you besides fighting, our fans want to know, they just picture you. i seen you on horses and stuff. What do you like to do as in the past uh, on your hobbies and stuff? What yeah, do you like? I'm, I'm like, I'm a real nature person, you know, so yes. I like adventures, you know. Uh, I told you before, Matt, I'm going to do this nature nature show after my fighting career. Tell me again. But my my plan is like, maybe maybe you, maybe you and Action are going to be my first guest. Yeah, Action Bronson, you know, he's Albanian too. He's my boy, so... I, I, thought, I thought about doing this like nature, nature show. We travel around the world, like go to Africa, hang out with some lions, with some <laughs> lepers and stuff, and uh, just invite fighters, you know, and maybe hang out with some tribal people, you know, because uh, I think they're like, we need to get, like, people need to get back in touch with nature, you know, that that's that's where we came from, you know, and I think in all this civil world that we're living today, like, we're so surrounded by technology, but we forget what really makes us ourselves, you know, where we came from, you know. Did you so, always like this when you were a kid, or did you develop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A I lot was always, it? I was, I was the crazy kid. As a, when I went to Albania to the village, I would grab the poisonous snakes and lizards and everything, you know. So I was, I've always been fascinated of that, you know. So probably, probably do something like that after, you know. That sounds fucking awesome, man. Yeah. Sign me up, me and Jimmy. Maybe not the yeah. one. Maybe you, not the we're gonna do a trip. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like the woods. I wouldn't be good. I don't do well in the woods. I don't like bugs. I don't like shitting outdoors. I'm very. I like hotels. I'm very bad in nature. But that's why yeah, I gotta get out there, man. You gotta like. You're fragile. You gotta be strong again. Maybe he's yeah. Fragile. I don't know. He's afraid he'll be eaten. I Shit. certainly am by insects. Oh. I don't get bitten by bugs. All right. Well, Alir, look, good luck uh, against Alexi Olenek. This is a great fight. I'm really happy that, that you're, you're healed up and everything is okay for you. And uh, this is a great fight. And uh, ha have a great fight, man. It was good talking to you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Always a pleasure talking with you guys. All, All right. right. Alia, Take care, man. Have a good, good fight. See you, buddy. See you, man. See you. I like Ilya a lot, man. Yeah, he's great. I, I just, I've never yeah. been an outdoor, I, and I'm trying, I, I apologize. There's something with my computer is wrong. There it is. Whereas my, my mouse keeps disappearing and I can't get it back. So I'm trying to scroll through questions or through 
things I want to look at and I can't. So that's why I'm a little distracted. My computer's all fucked up. I'm always up. a lot of distraction. That doesn't change the fact that I showed some nice headlock escapes this morning in honor of Henzo Gracie's fight on the subway. Yes, that was very impressive. No, I mean, listen, I tell my guys, listen, once in a while, it's good to review that shit because yeah. a guy on the fucking, the fucking one train is not going to attack you with an X guard. He That's most right. put you in a headlock. You understand? By the way, Matt, what? we should say once again, another extremely exciting Dana White contender series. Oh, I believe that was the season finale. Oh, um, yes. Five yes. contracts uh, awarded. Um, yeah, Bo Nichols, uh, an, an incredible less than a minute stoppage. And he, of course, he calls out, I believe, Shemaev, which I think is kind of uh, ballsy, just getting his name out there. But uh, he dropped uh, a beard with a punch and then was just all over him. Um, it was, that was a very, very fast. Uh, 26 very years quick. old, man. He's yeah. 26 years old. The guy he fought was on a uh, six or something winning streak. He only had one loss or whatever it was. So it's like, you know, and the guy had reach on him, Donovan Beard. And uh, I was impressed. I mean, impressive is an understatement. I can't wait to yeah. see that guy in the UFC. He's got a little bit of that, or a lot of bit of that it factor. Yeah. There's something special about him, you know? Yeah. Uh, also, it, congratulations. Uh, I'm sorry about to Sam Patterson. Yes. Uh, a, a great fight with uh, uh, Vinicius uh, uh, Sensi. Uh, really good. He had a tough first round. Uh, he looked like he was in a lot of trouble. And um, he really I'm fought. Not, I'm not well summing the second, up. Third. I'm not summing up all Brazilians, obviously, but Venice, Venetius, uh, uh, Sensi. Yeah, right? I believe so. Yeah. I, I can't get my thing back open. Cause Somebody, I can't move I, my fucking mouse. I don't know. It's hard to translate Portuguese and they, they have a hard time saying, uh, in Portuguese versa climber. <laughs> no, well, again, they can't, they get tired, Jimmy. They got to listen. You don't need a versa climber. You got to run some fucking Hills. Mm -hmm. Go, you know, to motivate yourself, put the acai in the top of the hill, run up there, have a scoop. Listen, or do what I do. I briskly walk home from work. I briskly yeah, walk. Yeah, because you're going to get fucking mugged. The city's That's a right. Shithole. I'm a brisk walker. It certainly is a shithole. I used, Jimmy, I used to walk into the fucking city. You remember. Yeah. Stoned as a monkey with the fucking, with the headphones on, fucking just walking around. And I'd have a song on. For instance, I'm listening to a song now by Dram called Cute. And it goes, I think you're cute. Ready? I think you're cute. Wait, Jimmy. Yep. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, I think sweet. you're cute. So I'd be, I'd, I'd be listening. And I'd be like, I'd be like bopping up and down. Sure. And, I, and then I get a sip of espresso. I'm telling you about my whole day when I used to go to the city. And I'd sit in that little park near, um, near what is it, 36 or 36? Yeah. And, and seventh. And I'd sit there. I'd sit by espresso and I'd people watch. Not anymore, Jimmy. Now, I'd be like a little fucking snake plissing. I'd be like, arr, arr. anybody go? I'm not fucking around. Did anybody not, bother I'm you? Did anybody uh, ever bother you on the train? No, no, nobody bothers me. See? But they, well, what's going on, Jimmy? I just saw a thing the other day, one of my buddies sent me, and it was, I think it was, it, if it wasn't Penn Station, it was, it was, it was one of those. But this 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 gentleman is not oh, a this gentleman. fucking he's psychopath the yeah he's the opposite of a gentleman yeah. he's a fucking savage he fucking chased down this girl beat her up yeah money, kicking her in the fucking head what happened to that girl and then some uh, guy went to help and the guy she, looked at him the guy ran off fucking, she might you know what it was he this guy was legit nuts she said he was mumbling about satan and incoherent just another fucking mental <laughs> patient it's just frustrating and what happened to her she all right or not? she might they said she was close to losing her eye but i saw a picture of her and she had like a stitch but it looks like she's gonna uh, hopefully be okay for eyes. now where okay. is that guy is he out already i'm sure i'm <laughs> sure i'm sure uh they don't believe in holding people with uh for bail anymore so I, I'm, I'm sure that uh he's out and about and i'm yeah, sure that the uh maybe the mayor gave him a ride i don't know well let me tell you what a shit show jimmy he's no other... not kidding you, Are you should... mean my mouse not working yes you're right matt how's, how's your stand up been buddy it's great i just did uh i taped a cd um oh wow. yeah which which will be released uh i was away in um a lot of ufc unfiltered fans by the way out in um uh, with a f Minneapolis, which was great. And I'm doing a gig tonight in the city. So if you ever want to come in on a Wednesday and hang out, feel free. I think I will one of these nights. 
You always uh, say that. Let's, let's finish the. I do always say that. Just like you. Said, I can't. You, you Matt. You have to go. We have dinner, and we don't have dinner. I would love to have supper. So, so, <sighs> ah! I could have said. Exactly. I see these two at the exact same time. That was do. Yo, me a coke. We're like two women on our periods, running the same sneeze cycle. Matt, you're gonna have to bring up the fights because I can't. My window is over. My fucking. God damn it! This lousy computer. Jack, Jack, I have to do it on my phone. Jack, Jack my you, well, you talked about Sam Patterson already, but Jack, uh, Jack. Oh, Jack Jenkins, Jenkins. Yeah. I'll tell you, and he's a former uh, rugby player. Like, oh wait, wait, no, was that him? Yes, 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 that is. He's a former uh, rugby player, and he and he trains with uh, Volkanovski. He shows, and he's like, Dane is like, look, he showed off like his um, like his grappling and whatnot. But he's like, look, I heard he's a really good striker. I want to see some of that yeah. in the UFC. And uh, he said, on another night, maybe I wouldn't take him, but tonight I'm taking him because it was and the season finale. I love that. Yeah, he just made it in over Linares. Um, and that was that was a great fight. I mean, that was a, a really a nasty fight. I believe Linares was bleeding terribly uh, on both yeah. sides of the octagon, and uh, Jenkins just kept going, just kept driving his elbow uh, into that same spot. That was a really great fight. Hey, the next one, the Battle of the Brazilians. I fucking love this fight. Now, listen, this is the reason being. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me. Rafael Estevam, yeah. Look, why, why don't you let me uh, pronounce it? Oh. Rafael Estevam. Yeah. Rafael. Estevam. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm just happy I said it. But uh, listen, Javier versus uh, Elias, Joao yeah. Elias. Yeah. Now, Elias, he was looking at, it's almost like a really, really dangerous striker just looking for the fucking KO hard and hard. Hard and, and just fast paced. It's like that because he was going for submission. He's known for his arm bars, but he's also going for leg bar, leg locks. He's yeah. going for triangles, the arm bars, the arm bars, the triangles. Yeah. And what happened was, um, Hafiel is so good in jujitsu. He's from Nova Union. You know, you know, Nova Union. You know, you know. I always fuck up that name. Nova Union. Shut up, Jimmy. How do you say it? Nova I'm, Union. I'm, you're the jujitsu man, and I cannot open my windows. <laughs> But he's trained. But he's trained by Andre Pedaderis. Okay, okay. From Nova Union. <laughs> I'm saying it does funny. You're saying but, it right. Stop it. Anyway, listen. He so he has very good jujitsu. So his positioning, the way he distributed his weight, and on, on these attacks where other guys would have been probably submitted, I'll say eight out of ten guys. Let's let's say nine because some guys are good, really good jujitsu, but. Eight out of ten guys are getting tapped out. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's one of the couple that's not. His jujitsu was on point. There was a couple of, oh, my God, he's going to get a knee bar and arm bar. He took it all away. And then as the fight went on, it's almost like, to make that um, comparison to a striker, a knockout guy doing it with now not as much pop in his punches. Right. So now, he's, now he's going for these submissions, but you see, okay, he's putting everything into it, but everything is now a little less. Everything is... You see them coming. Uh, Hafiel sees them coming. He's not only is he taking them away, he's taking them away, and this is the number one thing he's doing. Yep. He's he, he, when he's adding these hammer, hammer fist and punching. Uh, Elias, he the biggest thing he's not managing the distance. He's not he's offsetting the balance. He's looking for the submissions, but he's not man, he's not either too close or too far. He's leaving him. And that might be great if you're in Abu Dhabi. If you're as far as a jiu-jitsu match, yeah, tournament, or if you're in a no gi submission or jiu-jitsu match, but when it comes down to the to the to the art of just fighting, you got to have your jiu-jitsu on point where you managing your distance is a skill in itself, okay? Because yeah. you're not used to getting hit in the face when you're looking for these fucking submissions. So that you know, between rounds, I thought that uh Elias's corner really was not on point. I they did nothing but berate this kid. What are you doing? What are you what are you, they were just saying like what happened? They were kind of yelling, yeah, yelling in the third round too, they even yeah. Really, why don't you tell them, listen, man, well exactly what I'm saying. Either good two, God, they're yelling, good God. What they, they're just kind of yelling shock at how poorly he's doing. You yeah. know what? Guess who else is shocked? Elias. Because his game plan's not working. Why don't you try to steer me? It's not about getting motivated for this kid. The kid's trying. He's yeah. trying to balls off. Yeah. But he's running out of fucking steam. How about the first 30 seconds of the next fucking five round? You tell him to get on the bike, circle, get your win back a little. Yeah. Or you got to give him some kind of, it's about 
Fuck it, let him survive first and then go to finish. He's about to get fucking hammered out. So th- th- I wasn't happy with that corner. I thought that corner was um Yeah, it's a good point. Um I think it's French the word chite. No I'm okay. It wasn't <laughs> but uh it wasn't great. But uh all right, so that was that. And then lastly, uh Matt But Dan- not least. Last but not least. And he took out a Long Island guy with I Jim. A Jim changed at Long Island in May with my my buddy um uh LaFlair. Yeah, right, the flare, and uh, I didn't know that. I'm like, oh, a Long Island guy. I'm like, ah, and I saw him get taken out, but that happens. Uh, Mateo, Mateus uh, Mendoza, yeah, Mendoza, Mendoza, right? Uh-huh. Mendoza. Uh huh. Mendoza. I didn't see. I see him knock him down. I'm like, how did he knock him out? You didn't see from the camera angle they showed him the replay the left hand that followed. Yeah. So, yes. Ooh, right. It looked like he, could, he like hit him, and it was like a delayed reaction, or he hit his. He head. sat up a little bit, and then all of a sudden he was yeah. laid flat the fuck out. And you like when well, you saw that that left came in as he was going down. I, I yeah. didn't see it. I didn't see it at first. I know? didn't either. You know, but then I, I, um, I, I think you're cute. I think you're cute, Jimmy. Oh yes, I do. Anyway, it's a fun song. Do you want to listen to it later on? Well, yes, yeah, but oh, after dude, the show, we, we'll we'll tram. hop on. D R A M. No, wait. Let me ask you something. Before what? our guest, and she will be here very shortly. Well, you want me to play uh, it? Not, we can't hear it, but I can play it for you yourself. Before Tabitha arrives. No, no, no. What I wanted to ask you is. Yes. We, we should maybe do. Let's just do a couple of picks. Maybe the uh, the main and co-main. I mean, it's a it's a, it's a great uh, Mackenzie Dern against Yan Shannon. I mean, that's a great fight. Um, although although the Yana's on a two fight uh, <coughs> losing streak, but that's a very interesting main event. Oh, excuse me. Hi, Jimmy. Hey, buddy. And I, I think I know who I'm going with. So I'm going to say that. I, I got to take. Who? How are you taking? I'm going to take Mackenzie. How are you going to take? Her? And when? Um. Well, split decision with that one. Uh, yeah. Well, this is what I'm going to do. That's fucking computer. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to take Mackenzie Dern. And I'm going to say, now this is what, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say second round sub. Oh my God. Did I say that? Ooh. Yeah. That That's annoying. I'm not going to tell you. But Jimmy, it's exciting that I said that. But since you took Mackenzie. Yes. Oh, I don't see. Oh. I don't see uh, Jan losing sir. three straight. You, you played me, sir. I was going to take McKenzie, but now I'm like, no, that's no fun because then we're both picking McKenzie, and we're competing for the king of UFC unfiltered picker. Um, she did get uh, knocked out by uh, Sparza, and uh, she lost a split to Marina Rodriguez. But I think Jan comes back. Do you? Um, Hard to pick against Mackenzie. I mean, it is really, hard. And you but Jan is fifteen and three. Mackenzie's twelve and two. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Jan. She's in the waiting room. Hold on. No, no I'm gonna second keep round going. stoppage. I was gonna say we save it for after, but let's just get Tabitha. Uh, Tabitha Ricci. Let's bring her in right now. Tabitha. Well, she's trained with Mackenzie, so it'll be interesting to see how she sees this. It's Ricci, not Ricky. I said Ricci. I know. Oh. Jimmy, I'm like a bad little boy. Let's I certainly go, are. My really fresh. You're very fresh. Let's talk to Tabitha. She's yeah. fighting Jessica Penny. Who's she supposed to fight? Uh, well, well, there she is. Hello. Hello, Hello Tabitha. Can you guys hear me? We yeah. can, yes. Awesome. Sun's out, guns out. Go ahead. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Jimmy. Jimmy, now you, Jimmy. <laughs> I can't. If I do it, I'll bump the microphone. I don't want to show off. I'm afraid I'll I'll, I'll hurt the microphone. Now, now, Tabitha, who are you supposed to fight? Well, I supposed to fight Cheyenne, the Water Princess. And what happened? Princess. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, I know that she had to pull out, and then now I'm fighting Jessica Penn. What do you think about how how? soon was this replacement how soon did they switch this off uh one month ago all right okay, so you, you guys have both had time to get ready for each other yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. we had we had a we had enough time do you watch a lot of tape on your on your opponent or do you leave that to your coaches 
I do watch it with my coach. We watch together. Not every time. We watch like one time, go through some uh, fights. Like we, we select some fights, we watch it, and then we work on top of that. Yeah. Now, now Jessica Penne, she's 39 years old. Now, I'm not going to listen. It's not nice to say with women with their age and everything. Yeah, but if yeah. I was your trainer, I would be like, you better push this B. She's a 40 year old. You're 27. Guess this bitch. Oh, that's what I would say. That's what I would say. But I would, you know, I clean up the language, but that's what I would say. Oh, your opponent is your, is your, oh, your trainer's letting you know, look, you're the young gun here. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's put the, <laughs> put it on her. I don't know. Tell me. Yeah, 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 yeah. We talk about that too. So that, that's on the, on the game plan too. That's <laughs> about taking pace. her later to the fight if possible. I, <laughs> yeah. Push the pace on it. <laughs> I think she's laughing because I think her coach said in Portuguese, the same exact thing I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Similar. Now, now you've trained with the, how, how much training did you do with Mackenzie? Well, uh, we met once a week, Fridays, we do sparring training because she lives very far from me. So on Friday is usually the sparring day. So we got a group of girls and we try to get together to get a good, good session. Oh, okay. And what do yeah. you think about this main? I think this is a really interesting main event uh, between yeah. her and Jan Shannon. What, what do you think of that fight? Uh, and, and how do you see that uh, ending up? Well, I think Mackenzie, she's so ready. She looks very good in the gym. Uh, and I'm pretty sure she can she can finish the fight. Tabitha, it says judo and BJJ. What did you start your martial arts with? What was your first discipline? Uh, in judo. In judo. My dad's ma master in judo. And he put me in the martial arts when I was six years old or younger. <laughs> and uh, I, that's how I, I started getting love for that. And uh, I never stopped it since that. And yeah. then how soon after did you start jujitsu? I started jujitsu when I was uh, 17 because I got proposed to my Mai Tai gym if I want to do MMA fight. And I was looking at the study and said, oh, I need to do jujitsu. And then that's why I started jujitsu for fighting MMA. Yeah. Oh, you, you started it specifically so you could go into MMA. Yes, yes. But how, how was that transition? Because you were already used to the judo. So yes. you had to be already familiar with some some chokes and some, some arm bars. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was already, already knew uh, arm bars, chokes, you know, everything that we can do in judo. So actually, I got my blue belt with six months. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. I notice that you have a baby shark you're holding. I do. <laughs> now, when that Nick, now listen. Do you come out to the song? No, do you? I did in my last fight. I did a remix with the the Jaws, the movie Jaws, and the Baby Shark. <laughs> the Baby Shark. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you came out with just the Baby Shark song, that you're a, you might win before you get in the cage. Your it would, yeah, it would drive your opponent would quit. Your opponent would quit if you came out to that song. Hey, <laughs> they, 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 I, it might be like, ah, I don't know. Dude. How many, did that song get too crazy? You hear it a lot? Oh, my God. And actually, I try don't hear much because I keep singing on my head over and over and over. It's kind of annoying sometimes. Yeah, it's called an earworm. It just gets in there and it just stays and it doesn't stop. Yes, yes. Now, when you were taking judo before you said you wanted to do MMA. Did you plan on doing anything with judo or what did you want to do with your life? Did you want to be a fighter or did you just take judo because you loved it? I was taking judo because I love it, but every sport that I, I, I was uh, playing or doing it, I always want to compete. So I always want to try, I want to, I want to be the best one in all these sport that I, that I was doing. So I want to compete. I want to challenge myself. Doesn't matter which sport was it. I actually did a lot. I did basketball, football, everything, volleyball. <laughs> American football or soccer? No, soccer. Oh, you played soccer. Yeah. Were you any good yeah. at those? Uh, I was good in basketball, but not, not much in soccer. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, why didn't, were you good, not good in soccer? Were you not fast enough or were you just your feet not coordinated? Because I suck in soccer. I tried it. Like I, I just can't do it. 
I just uh I, I think I like more the the grappling style, but did I didn't fell much in love with the soccer as a as a the feeling that I had doing a judo or jujitsu or Right. Um, because yeah, somebody runs by and you can't grab them. You want to grab and just throw them yeah, on the ground. I want to grab it. I want, I like to do, I know we, we're like, we grab because we like to do power things, you know, like. <laughs> I feel bad for judo. Judo gets a tough, judo is so effective, you know, but you're not going to see a judo school on every block. Jiu-jitsu is yeah. blowing up. You see a lot of jiu-jitsu schools now. Yes. Obviously, yes. boxing, Muay Thai, they're very, girls will use it just to get in shape. Yeah. Like, but yes. judo is so rough on the body that it'll, yes. just, it'll only get to a certain level of popularity and that everybody's like, hey, you ask anybody, and listen, I know I got a new knee recently with my jiu-jitsu, mm-hmm. but everybody that's done judo for a long time, like, ah, yeah, I got a new body. <laughs> Right, and their back, their neck. Their... You know, it's, it's like it's like them. wrestling. Wrestling is very rough and tough in the body too. I feel. Yeah. You know what? So is American football. I guess a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. Why is judo so much rougher than? Is it all the throws? I believe. It's I, yes, all the <laughs> throws. We got you get a slam all the time. You know, uh, I think that that's rough in the body. But I think judo is one of the the sports can give you a lot of base for any sport that you do in the whole entire world you know it's not just the the base of the the techniques for learning on other martial arts but i think more deep the philosophy the judo uh, brings uh, for people you know the respect that you have for your coach for your teammates you know i think judo uh, gives us uh, a lot of philosophy on the martial arts i that's what i really appreciate in judo too and oh, so like you yeah. A lot of the jiu-jitsu schools are a bunch of stoners, right? It's like, yeah, hey, man, it up. <laughs> right? No, not- j- jiu-jitsu give us a good base, but in terms of philo- philosophy and respect, respectful, I think judo is is the most one. Yeah. Well, and your cool. father was a, a he was a champion judo fighter. Did he compete like like? Uh- yes, yes, he competed a lot of awards, master awards. Uh, yeah, he actually is still competing. <laughs> Wow! Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so awesome! That's great. Yeah. Now, yeah. what does he think? What does he think of your career? He has to be over the moon with this. He yeah, be- he's super proud of me, and uh, that that was my biggest goal: make my family and the people that I love proud of me. So I'm I'm achieving that right now. So that's very uh, I'm very ha- happy for that. And uh, yeah, they're like all exciting. Actually, in the fight week, they cannot even sleep. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah. Do you now? Do you have your family around you during a fight, or do you like to see them after? I I I wish I could have them all my fight weeks with me, but uh, they they're living in Brazil. Uh, and my last fight in Gaspoliana, I had a chance, an opportunity to bring my mom and my dad, but for this time, uh, I I can I cannot bring it then all the time, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, but they yeah. came up for the last one. They they came from the last one and it was pretty cool. Yeah. What part of Brazil? Oh, there. oh, go ahead. What part of Brazil we were asking? São Paulo, São Paulo. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've never been to São Paulo. I, I landed there. I was going. I went to Rio with some friends, and I la- right. We landed there. So I spent about an hour in the São Paulo airport, and it was very nice. Uh, but I've never spent time in the city. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool, São Paulo. Jimmy, Actually, I live, in, I'm sorry, I, I live in a small city from Sao Paulo called Bidigui. Sao Paulo is huge. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I live in a small city, like uh, 100,000 people. Is there and like 20 then, million people in Sao Paulo? It's, it's a oh, massive city. Yes, it's a massive one. Yeah. Um, Matt, have you been or no? I've been to Rio. I've been yeah. to Baja Tijuca. Mm. Yeah, a couple of That's yeah. beautiful. I had yes, some yes. acai on the beach. I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> acai is my go-to every day. <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? It feels like you're so cheap. Good. Jimmy, it's not the same as ice cream, like you say. It's different. Um, it's no, different. it's not. But I mean, uh, it, it looks like ice cream, and it tastes... Hey. It's better than ice cream because you feel like you're eating at least kind of healthy. <laughs> hey, hey, Tabitha, when you're not training, okay, something besides training, what's a hobby you like? Are you big into books or you're watching some shows on Netflix. Tell us some of your hobbies. <laughs> That's hard because I'm always training, you know, training is my hobby. Uh, so Any bit of downtime. 
No active <laughs> rest when you're going for a hike either. None of that. What are you, are you watching any shows? Or are you reading any books? I, I read a book. Actually, I'm reading that book here. I have it here with me. It better not be The uh, Adventures of Baby Shark. Oh, no, here we go. What is this? It's the Kobe Bryant uh, strength conditioning coach that wrote this book about winning. And oh, it's wow. very, yeah, yeah, it's super deep, very like, I love read, read this type of book, you know, motivating stuff. Yeah. So, You're not wasting <laughs> any time. This is great. And Sao yeah, Paulo has 12 million uh, people, by the way. 12 million. I was wrong. It is 12 million. You, you just Google? You just Google. I just Googled it because I, I, I said there was 20 million people and the people who live there will probably go, Jim, you're a fucking idiot. There's only 12 million. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure I corrected myself. Okay. That, that's important. Yes. I don't want to piss people off. Yeah, so you, when you read, you read basically for information on how to make yourself a better fighter. You, it's, it's almost all always. work related. Yeah. Always, and it, that's what I like, you know. So I, I always try. I think there's always something that we can get better. Always something that we can. We sometimes we think we're doing everything good, everything correct, but there's always something that we can do more. So that's what I look for. Yeah. Well, Tabitha, look, have a great fight on Saturday. It was uh, it was great Thank talking you. to you, and uh, and uh, I'm sure that if you you're you're looking at getting uh getting uh, uh ranked if you if you beat uh, Jessica. Yes, yes. I look forward to getting the rank and, uh, and keep building myself up. We'll talk to you again. All right, have a great fight. It was fun talking to you. That was fun, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Right. Tabitha Ricci, thanks very much. Take care. Thank you, guys. All Bye. right, we'll talk to you again. Bye. Oh, Jimmy. I was going to say when she leaves, she's lovely, right? That was nice. Very nice. Very nice person. And holding the shark, like you said. Yeah. Holding the baby shark. Yeah. Do, 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 baby shark. That would be a great walkout song just baby to drive everybody shark. fucking crazy. She oh, do my that. God. Everybody would hate her. They'd be like, Bow! you know? What about right, when, Matt, Nisha, when Nisha Tate used to eat the cupcake? In the, wait, wasn't she cupcake? She was cupcake, yeah. I'm and sure she, she still is. Cupcake in the, in the audience. That, that gimmick didn't work for me. No. Throw that cupcake. How about this? Throw that cupcake. Um, yeah, keep that cupcake away from Aspen Lad. <laughs> you're such a dick. <laughs> ah! and, and, and Hamzat. <laughs> hey, 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 big report. Somebody stole Misha Tate's cupcake. Quick. <laughs> check fucking check Aspen Lad's locker. Anyway, listen. <laughs> Fuck it. Everybody, listen to me, Jimmy. We have Francisco so Trinaldo against our buddy Randy Brown is the co-main. That's a good co-main, too. What do you think? Who? Uh, Randy Brown against Trinaldo. You know, listen, I'm a little biased. Randy Brown is uh, a friend, yeah. <laughs> leave the leave leave Aspen Lad alone. All right? Agreed. All right? Leave her alone. Agreed. Agreed. Listen to me. She didn't go near the, the what he calls cupcakes. Yes, but, uh, this is what cupcakes. I was going to say. I feel that Listen, some fighters get old overnight. I don't know if this is the night that he gets old, Trinaldo, but he is kind of old. He's a 44 yeah. years old. It's crazy. Randy Brown, is it's his time now. Come on, Randy Brown. Yeah. Now you got to – it's not that you should take him out. You got to take him out. Yeah. You want to be a champion. You want to make some waves. This guy's 45. Send him into retirement. I'm crying, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, what else before the dust buster goes on? Yeah, I know, they just started. Listen, thank you to our guest, Tabitha Ricci and Alir Latifi. Really fun to talk to. Um, and we'll talk again, Matt. You and I always talk over the weekend. Yes. We'll talk uh, before this fight. Uh, um, <laughs> Dern against Shannon. That's a great fight. And, um, you know. Wait, when is the fight? When is it? Oh, I should actually. I just closed my thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Saturday, it's Saturday night. But, uh, it is it's, Saturday it's night. At the, uh, well, uh, you know what? I'm going to say when it is. Yes, buddy. Now, oh, it's October 1st at the Apex. What, what time, time, though? We want to get the time. The time. I see that on the on the prep sheet. Now we're looking for a time. Ready? Yeah, oh, look, I'm going to appear from Jake the Mighty Ginger. Ready? Like I'm doing a spell. No, it's. I bet it's here. It's here. It's um, <laughs> fight night. It is uh, October 1st, 2022. It, uh, is there a time here? <laughs> no, but you're right. <laughs> I apologize. There's you're no wrong. goddamn time, you crazy ginger. Damn you, Jake. Jake, uh, yeah, what, what time is it, Jake? So good. Jake, you're going to wake my kids, Jake. You're going to bother me about a steak? Oh, five, five o'clock. Stop with Pacific, Jake. You don't talk no Pacific one uses time, Pacific. Jake. It's eight o'clock. <laughs> five o'clock Pacific. 
Who the? No one says that. It's eight, eight o'clock East Coast time. <laughs> I have so much fun. No one eight has ever said. That's the first time I ever saw a PST ever. <laughs> we like to give our listen. Now you know you're getting. You, you're welcome to the show, Jake the Mighty Ginger. Now we, you know Jake you're in- knows. He knows that was a terrible error. Oh, Nobody puts cold. Pacific Coast. God damn. Oh, just add three hours, everybody. You'll find out what time it is. Yeah. Listen. Eight o'clock East Coast time. Figure out the rest. <laughs> wait, wait. What time is it? It's eight o'clock East Coast time. Eight o'clock New York okay. time. Sorry. New York. Jimmy. Fuck East Coast. New York time. What are you doing this weekend? Fat black pussycat? No, I'm not. I'm just doing like the comedy cell. Yeah. Look oh, at wait a oh, minute. No. He oh, said he fucked up. It's seven o'clock Eastern time. What time Pacific time, Jake? Four? No, no, wait no let's make sure, because I don't think Jake knows his time zones. Jake doesn't know his times tables. Jake, you're the man. You're with us. Four Jake. o'clock. Okay, he's right. Seven o'clock New York time. Yes. Uh, at the Apex. Great, great fight. Jimmy, I will be talking to you shortly in a couple of days. Right? Yes, you will. See you soon, buddy. Goodbye, everyone. So much fun. Bye. Shark, do, 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 do